Um, in this photograph here, um, uh, we see uh, several things. Uh, I'm interested in the whole picture. I'm interested in that church spire on the right. I don't know when it was built, but my guess is it's 100 years old or more, right? I'm interested in this, this tower too. Anybody know how old this is? Guessing? 1930s, 1890? 1929. We, we're not sure, but one thing we know is that that tower, that will survive longer than anything behind it, correct? Let's go and have a look again. What's the life expectancy of the building, this building here? Does anybody know when that was put up? 1960s? Um, how many more weeks of life has it got before someone's going to put it down? Do we know? It may be an eyesore. I wasn't thinking it was an eyesore. Uh, what I was thinking about was the fact that it's falling to bits. You know and I know that inside the whole thing's corroded, right? That building will have been designed to fall down. How do I know that? I know that because I speak to the people who run corporate real estate in some of the largest companies of the world. I was in America. Uh, we had the head of real estate from, uh, from this company, multinational, that, uh, all household name companies, the head of real estate from McDonald's and so on. They were all there in the room, and I asked them a question. I said, put up your hands uh, if you think, if, if, uh, if you have buildings that you think have only got a 30-year life or so. They all put their hands up. I said, uh, put your hands up if you've got buildings that you think will still be around in 50 years' time. Put your hands up if you think you've got a building that might just last 40 years. A brand new building that might just last 40 years. 40. The general consensus is 30 if you're lucky, 40, well, that's pushing it. What they're saying is that the buildings that they themselves have been buying from you guys, they reckon they're going to pull down and redevelop. They cannot imagine a commercial building that's going to last more than a generation. They just can't get their minds around it. And the reason I, I have a problem with that is that this particular building and this one, if you look at their lifetime energy use, it's hugely influenced by the amount of energy putting the thing up, taking it down. 30% of the energy of this particular building put up in the 1960s, actually that's a very old building then, commercially, but 30% of it has been used in probably in constructing it. Another 10% will be used in knocking it down. So up to 40% of a building that only lasts 35 years is used simply putting it up, taking it down again. If we can get that building to last an extra decade, just 10 more years, we have done a huge amount to reduce the carbon footprint of that building. And that's why I'm so enthusiastic as you are about retrofitting, but I'm also more enthusiastic about visionary retrofitting that means we can actually get away with retrofit once every 15 years rather than once every seven. Put your hands up if you've done a retrofit on a building that has already been retrofitted once. Put your hands up at the interval between retrofits it was less than 20 years. I rest my case. So we're constantly going back and re-engineering the same spaces because of a lack of vision in doing the thing right in the first place. I'm exaggerating to make the point, perhaps, but you get what I'm saying. Actually, I think this is a scandal. Um, put your hands up if you own your own home. I think you'd be pretty upset. We own our own home as well. I think you'd be pretty upset if you bought a new home it was manufactured, it was built, um, let's say, 10 years ago, and you bought it on a 25-year mortgage, so you've got 15 more years to run. And the, and the uh, architect, you've just discovered from the architect and the engineer that this building is going to auto-destruct in 20 years' time. Five years after you pay off the mortgage, the whole building is going to go boom and disappear in a puff of smoke. What he really means is it won't be worth repairing it. Uh, that there will be so many structural problems with that building that it will have zero capital value. In fact, negative capital value because you're going to be charged a uh, huge amount, 10%, um, you're going to be charged up to um, what a significant amount of the building cost of the building simply to knock it down and take it away in an environmentally sensitive way. I think you'd be hopping mad, would you not? My guess is that you'd be suing the architect, the engineer, the designer, uh, you, anybody who knew the truth about this rotten house that you just bought, <clears throat> you're pursuing it, right? Correct? Put your hands up if you agree with me. So let's, let's agree then that anyone who sells homes 
with an auto-destruct button built into them of 30 to 40 years is a criminal and should be put in prison. Put your hands up if you agree with that. My friends, you've just described commercial real estate industry. Now please tell me the moral difference between someone the, from the environmental point of view, from the, from the well-being of the nation point of view, from the energy use and carbon footprint point of view, from the, from the landscape point of view, please tell me a compelling reason why we say that people who build 30-year buildings are heroes because they save so much cost, so long as it's commercial. But they are criminals, put them in prison and throw away the key if it's domestic. I can't get my mind around it, and I happen to think that we're going to see a big rethink in this area. I know the reasons why. You say, look, listen, man, I can't get our clients to think more than five years ahead. You're asking me to build a building for 50 years. Get real. I agree it's a problem. But remember, the future is about emotion, and I happen to think that the longevity of buildings is going to be a very emotional issue in future. Um, and let's look at another one. This one, this beautiful building, how long do you think this will survive before it's knocked down? Did someone say a thousand years? I happen to think that's right. Except I think that, you know what? If it is knocked down, they will insist on rebuilding it. Molecule for molecule is exact replica. And it will be a, a cultural disaster that they've had to knock it down. Um, but they'll find a way to do it without anybody noticing. Why? This is the iconic international logo for Australia. Um, it's, it's, it's more famous than Ayers Rock. Um, and, and, and it's a spectacularly beautiful building. I've been inside it. It is a, it's amazing. It's wonderful. I believe it even if future generations think it is ugly as hell, which I cannot imagine, it'll be listed by then as, as it is already. It'll continue to be honored as a, an example of uh, late 20th century architecture that was already anticipating the new dawn of the new millennium. Um, as indeed it did. It looks actually as modern and third millennial uh, today as it did then. Um, and it's full of grace and, um, and, 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 uh, and, is, uh, and history and emotion because people have been there. I remember, uh, you know, I, I, I proposed to my girlfriend just after we went to the opera there. Or, you know, all these memories are caught up with these images um, and buildings are, have, have all kinds of character. So this is a beautiful building uh, uh, that the architect can be proud of. Everyone that's been associated with it can be proud of it. And what about this landscape? Say, well, Patrick, the reason we pulled down the stuff is because actually it wasn't particularly good in the first place. Well, why not? Why wasn't it good? What is it about buildings that, we're, that so we to build them? It's just a utilitarian chunk of glass and metal and bits of air conditioning control systems. It has no real value, and we don't expect it to survive. We don't expect any of the buildings we built and am I company to be revered or listed by UNESCO or to have any emotional interest uh, from anyone and they will just be vaporized along with the rest of the skyline of Melbourne. Is that the world we want? I don't think so. Is it so difficult to build a building that people like? Is it so difficult to build something that actually ought to last a thousand years or could last a thousand years? Is it so difficult to create a building that people will be so upset to see it come down after only 40 years? I think, goodness me, I remember that going up. I believe that we are in the business of creating a better world. We are in the business of literally building tomorrow for tomorrow's generations. And I believe that we are in the business of making sure uh, that we use the resources right, that we build objects of beauty, that we build objects of value, and we do it for the long term, and we do it for the whole of humankind. Is it expensive to do it? Is it really that much more expensive to build something like that than to build something uh, like the background here that will be pulled down, according to the owners? <laughs> I don't think so. So I think this is a moral issue. Building longevity is a number one. It will be number one in future uh, from every possible point of view.